This video is brought to you by Surfshark VPN. Aang is the avatar that probably had the most impact on the world. He stopped a hundred year long war, made peace between all the nations, opened up Republic City, which is basically like the capital of the avatar world. Tenzin clearly had big shoes to fill after Aang died. It was basically his sole responsibility to not only carry on the air nation, but also teach the next avatar airbending. Aang of course knew this, so before he died, he left behind a book for for Tenzin. Aang starts off this book with a letter to Tenzin. In this letter, Aang says he's putting together this book for the future because one day, there's gonna be a time where Tenzin will be too busy studying, having fun with his friends, training, and all of that to listen to his old man. He explains how all of this information is going to be vital to him, and he and him are the last airbenders, and he hopes his book gives him some insight on the world around him and his life. He ends off this letter by saying him and Katara will always be proud of him. The first few lessons Aang gives Tenzin are quick ones. He shows Aang the map of the world, he explains the Avatar state, and the hundred year long war, from the origins, to Roku, to when he defeated Ozai. Now here is where Aang clearly gets a little bit excited talking to Tenzin. He tells him about the air nomads, the air temples, and airbending, but let's start off with what he says about the air nomads because I actually didn't know this. This is some new information here. Aang explains how the air nomads actually didn't live at the air temples. They actually moved around a lot, so they had this flag, and this flag represents them being one nation, despite being far apart from each other. Aang then goes on to describe all of the other air temples. He starts off with the temple he's from, the Southern Air Temple. He tells him all about Monkey Atsu and how Monkey Atsu taught him all of his ideals. He tells him about the Avatar Sanctuary, all the games they used to play. And last but not least, he tells him that he actually found Momo there. The Northern Air Temple is just north of the Earth Kingdom, and the Eastern Air Temple is where air nomads get to pick out their bisons. He explains how the Western Air Temple is the most unusual of the air temples and it's actually located north of the fire nation here is where ang starts talking about airbenders now ang dives deep in this a lot more than the show ever did ang tells tenzin that he already knows airbending will be one of the greatest joys of his life but do you guys know what is one of my greatest joys in life that allows me to be virtually anywhere in the world well that brings me to today's sponsor. This video is brought to you by Surfshark VPN. Surfshark is a virtual private network that keeps your online identity safe by encrypting all the information sent between your device and the internet. This keeps your personal information safe between those big scary corporations and hackers on the internet. Surfshark allows you to change your virtual location to unblock content libraries and streaming services from all of the other countries, like all of the libraries on Netflix. As a YouTuber, I travel a lot. And if you guys didn't know, a lot of hotels actually look at where you're from to determine prices. I've personally used Surfshark many times to get around this. All I do is change my location and I get huge discounts. Surfshark also has a feature to where one account will work on an unlimited amount of devices. Trust me, I've tested it. Surfshark is a great product, so what are you guys waiting for? To get all of this, use my promo code AVATARS at checkout to receive 83% off plus 3 extra months free. Surfshark offers a 30 day money back guarantee, so there really is no risk to try it out. The link is in the description down below, and thank you so much to Surfshark for sponsoring today's video. What is airbending? Airbending is one of the four elements. When you're airbending, you learn to control the air currents either for gliding or use as a tool or even as a defensive weapon. Airbending is the strongest during autumn. In fact, when there were tons of airbenders around, most of them were born during this season. Aang goes on to actually describe how they fly with their gliders. Now, I didn't know this, but they actually catch the current with their gliders. They don't actually bend air into them or bend the air around them. They just catch the current and glide. Now, the airbenders not only flew around with these staffs, but they had the added ability of learning complex airbending techniques with it. Aang goes on to tell Tenzin about the monks, and how they would lead the future generation of air nomads. He actually describes how Monk Gyatsu was the only father figure he had in his life, and how Monk Gyatsu would treat him as if he was his own son. Now, it's kind of weird that Aang says this, because they don't really have the father-son dynamic in the air nomad life, but I don't know, it, it's, it's sweet at the same time. Aang also goes on to say how when he saw Monk Gyatsu dead, this drove him to want to stop the Fire Nation and restore balance to the world. Aang also mentions the general philosophies of the Air Nomads, how they're vegetarian, how all life is sacred, and all of that. 
the water tribes. Here is where Aang talks all about the water tribes and how they used to be one tribe before they lost contact. He lets Tenzin know all about the season one finale of the dynamic between Paku and Katara. He goes on to explain how water bending is all about using another person's energy against them, allowing their defense to become their offense. Their movements are fluid and graceful. Water benders utilize their defensive techniques as attacks without directly harming their opponents. He also goes on to describe how water benders can actually heal people, much like Katara. Now this can be either they were injured or they were sick, it works for both. Now here Aang clarifies blood bending. Some water benders can manipulate the blood and other bodily fluids of another person. Yeah, I'm not sure what he means by other bodily fluids, but let's move on. Here are some examples of some basic water bending forms. Aang goes on to describe the whole situation with the ocean and moon spirit. He goes on to say about Yue sacrifice, how she became the moon spirit, and he even tells Tenzin about the time he went into the Avatar state and destroyed all of those Fire Nation ships. Says he wasn't happy about it, but he did what he had to do. The Earth Kingdom. The Earth Kingdom is actually home of the top two biggest cities in the Avatar world, which is Ba Sing Se and Omashu. The people of the Earth Kingdom are proud and strong. They believe in working with the other nations of the world while upholding their many long-time traditions. Now, here's one thing I never really thought about, but Aang goes on to describe why their flag looks like this. The Earth Kingdom flag is a square containing a circle that houses a smaller square. This represents the many layers of deep rock that make up the Earth Kingdom, as well as the depth of the power of its people. Yeah, I can't say I've ever looked at it and thought that, but pretty cool knowing the lore. What is earthbending? Earthbending is the ability to manipulate the earth in all of its forms, such as rock or dirt. Earthbenders tend to be very strong and muscular. Aang goes on to say when he was learning earthbending from Toph, which was not easy, he remembers feeling like his muscles were becoming part of the rocks he was moving. Now, I didn't know this was exclusive to earthbenders, but apparently earthbenders can combine their power to accomplish amazing feats. Working as a team, a group of earthbenders can raise a huge section of earth to form a wall. They can team up to lift rocks, dirt, or coal into the air while the other earthbenders propel the material forward. Earthbenders are at their strongest during spring. Now unfortunately, Aang kinda debunks the sandbending theory how sandbenders are somehow related to airbenders or they were a cross between airbenders and earthbenders. That just gets debunked. Because Aang goes on to say sandbending is a special form of earthbending practiced by earthbenders who live in the desert. Sandbenders can use bending to make the tiny grains form solid projectiles or to gain firmer footing on the loose shifting sands. Aang goes on to say how metal bending was believed to be impossible for thousands of years until Toph actually discovered it. The Fire Nation. The Fire Nation is located on a group of volcanic islands, many of which are still active. It was once the world's leader in technology, advancements, and industry, but prosperity didn't spread to all of its citizens. Fire Lord Sozin, Azulon, and Ozai were responsible for the 100 year long war, but Zuko and Aang believe the Fire Nation can correct its past. The Fire Nation flag contains their national emblem, which is a teardrop shaped flame into the center of a triangular banner. What is firebending? Out of all of the elements, Firebending is the most aggressive and offensive orientated. The manipulation of fire is controlled through the breathing. The more skilled Aang got at firebending, the more he felt his hot breath fueling his hands and feet as they channeled the flames that he was bending. All firebenders draw their power from the sun. Some powerful firebenders even have the ability to generate and redirect lightning. This technique requires a level of inner peace. The first human firebenders learned the technique from the dragons, the original firebenders. Of course, who would have guessed it? Their strongest season is summer. And goes on to say that the philosophy of the Fire Nation is mysterious and aggressive. For generations, an all-powerful Fire Lord dominated his people, who lived in fear. Aang says he needed every single ounce of courage in his body to confront the Fire Lord during the war. However, since the war, Fire Lord Zuko has worked hard to change the pattern of ruling through intimidation. This is one of the final and most important lessons that Aang is gonna pass down to Tenzin. Tenzin, there's something else I want to tell you. My friends and I always believed that we were fighting for what was right. However, you can see from these wanted posters, sometimes the other people around us didn't agree with us, so they ostracized us. I think history has borne out that we did the right thing, but you should remember that every story has two sides. And not everyone always agreed that we were the good guys. Time teaches you to be wiser and make better choices, and we had much to learn. 
the spirit world. Aang goes on to say that being the avatar isn't only about power and fighting. He became the avatar during the war, but other avatars would spend their time in the spirit world enlightening themselves. He goes on to warn Tenzin about some of the most important things that he learned about the spirit world. He tells Tenzin how the spirit world was once a part of the physical world, but thousands of years ago, the portals were actually closed. A lot of the landscape of the spirit world is very similar to the real world. There's physical places that you can walk in, with ground, trees, and a sky, while other places are much harder to describe. They are more like feelings or thoughts than real places. Aang ends off his letters to Tenzin, talking about the final battle with Ozai. Aang goes on to describe how the Lion Turtle was actually the unsung hero of the Hundred Year War. Because of what the Lion Turtle taught him, he was able to defeat Fire Lord Ozai without taking his life. In the final paragraph of this entire book, Aang goes on to tell Tenzin that the Lion Turtle that helped him was the last of his kind. The other lion turtles were hunted and killed thousands of years before the Hundred Year War. And Aang said it best. I think this is a fitting place to end it. Alright guys, that is the end of the video. It's a bit different than my usual content. So if you want more stuff like this, just leave a like, comment down below. Once again, thank you so much to Surfshark for sponsoring today's video. It is the very first link in the description down below. So be sure to click that and I will see you guys next time. <laughs>